Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I love to dye yarn with Wilton's Violet Icing Color. This purple is beautiful and under the right conditions you can break it. So you get, can get a really bright blue and sort of a magenta pink purple color from that one food coloring color. Purples are some of the most dramatic colors that break, but you can break a lot of different food coloring colors. And this happens because of the difference in the rates of absorption of the red number three and the blue number one that are in that mixture. Red number three will start to strike really quickly at low acid, and the blue number one needs more acid and time. Now, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, well, Rebecca, can you not break Wilton's Violet? And yes, sort of. You can get a less broken purple. And I've shown a little bit of this in the past, but I want to revisit that and attempt to go for non-broken Wilton's Violet in today's video. The reason that this is so hard is because of those rates that I mentioned. The red number three will start to strike to superwash yarns with just my tap water. My tap water is slightly acidic and that's enough for those reds to just start striking. Today we are gonna use a non-superwash yarn, but you can take this technique and apply it to other yarns. Just know that it might be a little more difficult with a superwash yarn where colors overall just strike faster. Here is our strategy. We are gonna make our dye bath with the food coloring and water and no acid. While this is cold, we're gonna add the yarn, let it sit in there for a bit so that dye can reach all the yarn. And then, while things are still cold, we will add acid. Since there's not heat yet, the rates of absorption will still be really slow. And we're only gonna be adding a low amount of acid. And we'll let the yarn sit in there again for a little bit cool and then slowly heat it up, adding more acid as is necessary as time goes on. And in theory, we should end up with something that feels a lot less broken than this. Today we are going to use Knit Picks Bare Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool and is non-superwash. This is the same yarn base that I showed in the introduction with that broken violet colorway that I actually dyed earlier today, so I think it'll be a great comparison. Here is our star of the show, Wilton's Violet Icing Color. I love this and use it all the time. The key to look for if you want to use this are the ingredients. You can see that we have red number three and blue number one in there. These are the colors that will break, but also will give us our lovely purple color. I took half of a teaspoon of the icing color and dissolved it into half a cup of warm tap water. I like to use warm tap water because it helps the gel icing color dissolve a lot faster than if you're using cool. But I did this a little bit ago and so now it has settled to room temperature. When you want to create a more solid tone, another strategy is to start with a greater volume of water. In this pot, I have 16 cups of water, no acid, and we are gonna add our violet food coloring to this pot. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out the cup, but we are gonna stir things up so that way this food coloring is well dissolved here. The yarn pre-soaked for over 30 minutes and I did squeeze out a lot of that excess water. And now I am placing it into our dye bath and moving the yarn around with my gloved hands. This is to allow that dye to access as much of the yarn as possible and keep things relatively non-crowded. I am using this nylon reusable zip tie as an extra tie just to help out with things. And so there. The yarn is in the pot. It has access to all of that dye. And we're going to just let it sit. And we're going to wait 10 minutes. Give this some time to let that color reach everywhere before we go and add acid. Now I am going to take out the yarn and set it aside. And you can see it's not really absorbed a ton of color yet, 
just a little bit. And we are now going to add to our cool dye bath one tablespoon of white vinegar. Stir this up. And now we are going to add our yarn back in. And you could use, rather than your hand, you could use like a spoon or something. But we are going to stir this around. The reason why I removed the yarn before adding in this vinegar is for, um, I wanted to maximize the amount of time we had even coverage of that vinegar. If I poured the vinegar in on one side and then started moving it around, we could have gotten less even color absorption. But now I am going to let this sit cool for 10 minutes. I will come back and stir it gently every so often. This is 100% wool, so we want to be careful, but we want to allow even distribution of the color to our yarn to get as even coverage as possible. This is one tablespoon of white vinegar in 16 cups of water. This is about half the amount of acid that I normally use to get those reds starting to bind fairly quickly. But I am going to come back and continue to stir. You can see we are getting more color absorbing now. If I check in on that color though it is still very purple. I seriously debated adding some more vinegar right now to get closer to that proportion that I most frequently use. However, instead we're going to start adding some heat. But our pink is looking pretty even so far. As our pot heats up, I will be slowly coming and stirring things up gently so that way we can get as even uh, coverage of that pink color as possible. But I will be doing this over the next 20 minutes, which will include that time for heating up. It'll honestly could take that long to get to just below a simmer. We are not yet at a boil, but the blues are here. We have absorbed almost all or actually all of the pinks. And we can see that we've got this beautiful pink yarn, which I am briefly setting aside so we can add some more acid. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar and stir things up. Let's add our beautiful pink yarn back in. We are above the concentration of acid that I normally start at for dip dyeing to get a broken violet colorway. But we're still below the concentration that I normally add where I let all those blues absorb. I am going to go ahead and let things sit for 10 minutes, coming and stirring gently periodically, and then we'll check back in. But right now, that's blue. Okay, that 10 minutes are up, and there's a little bit of blue left, but it looks like we've got a really nice unbroken purple. I'm gonna now add just a nice healthy splash of white vinegar so we can absorb what's left of this blue color. I am also going to reduce the heat to low. Now, looking at this, I might see a little bit of some subtle breaking, but given that my water is slightly acidic to begin with and that these colors break so easily, this is honestly probably as close as I can get to unbroken uh, Wilton's Violet. Although I suppose I could have done all of this cold. But anyway, we're gonna sit 10 more minutes and try to absorb that last blue. Now let's take a closer look. Yeah, I'm going to turn the heat off and let this cool in the pot a little bit. I do see, you see some unevenness, some more pink and some more purple. It's not perfect, but these colors are temperamental. They strike fast and 
Yeah, I think the only way that this could potentially be improved would be to keep everything cool the whole time. However, this process still did take a while, uh, so you can increase the evenness of your color if you slowly increase the amount of acid, move things around, but leave it cold and only heat it at the very end. But I'm still very happy with this mostly unbroken Wilton's Violet. I'm going to let it cool off in the pot, absorb that last color, and then we'll come back to wash it once the yarn is cool. Now let's wash our yarn. It might be a little bit tangled, but that is okay. Um, one of the big reasons for having the nylon zip tie on there is that it'll make it easier for us to detangle things, especially once the yarn is dry. Any tangles are always easier to fix when the yarn is dry. But this color appears to be strongly set. I'm adding some clear disco. And uh, when the yarn is dry, maybe I will also film how I detangle it. If it is still, I don't think it's actually tangled, I think it's just slightly twisted. Um, but, yep, that color is set. I am going to rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. Another strategy for achieving a less broken colorway is to up that concentration of acid so the blue starts striking faster. In this yarn right here, I started with one tablespoon of citric acid in our eight cups of water, used the exact same amount of food coloring, and these colorways are so different. There was still some breaking that happened over here, but since the rates between the blue and purple pink absorption were much more similar, you don't really get that dramatic color shift. I was going to show the untangling of the yarn, but it was very anticlimactic because it wasn't tangled as much as one strand flipped over. Ultimately, having a nylon zip tie like this really helps because if some strands are flipped over in the wrong direction, you can use this as a point to order things. And then I like to go and focus on the other ties around the skein. You can see that we do have some tonal variation in here. There are some areas that are more magenta than purple and some more up in here. This is something that really would be hard to avoid. Under acidic conditions, the reds number threes will start to crash out of solution and they sometimes will then still strike to yarn, giving you brighter pink patches. But overall, this yarn is fairly purple and fairly unbroken, especially when you compare it to Broken Violet. This is, without question, the most solid I have ever gotten Wilton's Violet, with the exception of hand painting and stenciling with guar gum. That was a way that prevented the colors from spreading where I placed them, and we ended up with a fairly non-broken color. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Make sure you also turn on your notifications by pressing that bell icon. I release brand new yarn dyeing videos every Tuesday and Friday morning, and we have some special events with more content coming up, and you really don't want to miss a thing. If you're a huge Chemnitz super fan and want to support us on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreons get early access to new content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. Uh, you will find a link to that in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.